start. Tim, I'm very happy that um, I can be your host today in your okay. office and that you are my guest in this improvement uh, course uh, from a spark to flame on entrepreneurship and innovative management. Please share with us your entrepreneurial experience. How have you started, Kashila? What was the business idea about? How you met with your uh, colleague, with Yanis uh, Valjavets, the co-founder of Kashila? And actually, tell us a little bit something also about yourself. OK. Um, so it's glad to be here. And um, yeah, so um, actually, I, I wanted to be an entrepreneur since I was uh, a small kid. Um, so I wasn't dreaming about uh, driving a truck or something like that, but I wanted to to, to be my own boss and uh, have my own company. And um, so my first company was uh, when I was studying. Um, I was doing uh, development for IT projects like websites and later uh, mobile applications. And after after development for 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 another companies, um, we started our own project. It was called. Uh, it still is called. Uh, Open hours, Ospiralni uh, Chasi in Slovenian, uh, and um, and basically that was kind of the the, the first, let's say, uh, successful um, project that we launched, and uh, it's still used by two million people a month uh, across Europe, uh, with the the strongest countries are in Scandinavia, and uh, so that's why it was pretty difficult for me. Um, to jump into the new kind of uh, so into the new wave uh, that happened in in, in computer uh, science or in, with, with in, uh, like the next thing of the internet, um, so the blockchain happened, and and uh, with my friend Yanni that we met like uh, when we were kids in uh, end of uh, end of primary school. And so basically, we talked for a few weeks and tried to do something and to figure out why Bitcoin or blockchain as a technology will fail. So basically, we tried to figure out why not to go into this new thing that, that's going to happen or that it's happening. And um, so basically, we, we couldn't figure out in let's say a few weeks, um, why we should not do this. Um, and as I was saying, like I was running a business before starting the, the first blockchain company. And that's why it was more difficult for me because uh, I, I had something to lose if I don't keep focusing on, on, the, on my previous company and, and uh, previous project. But uh, I did it anyway, so basically, um, we started Kishila. It was uh, the first uh, Bitcoin company with banking license uh, in in the world, actually. And um, so we are actually the payment processor that we can uh, accept Bitcoins and pay euros to whatever bank account in Europe. And uh, so at the time, this was like three years ago, um, we tried to, so there was a lot of buzz around uh, what can be bought uh, with Bitcoin, and why is the Bitcoin useful if you cannot use it in, you know, in daily spending and so on? So, and we figured, okay, why not? If if many companies were trying to to expose themselves um, with accepting Bitcoins, and um, and that's why we we were we were saying like, okay, why not to pay to any why not pay uh, to any bank account, to any company that has bank account directly with Bitcoins? And so, so um, yeah, we figured that we need the banking license uh, to, to process this sort of payments. And it was quite a painful process, I must say, to acquire this license uh, because like, uh, you need, you need the approval from the regulator to actually um, to, to, to get this license. And uh, we, we, we did that. We, we secured the license uh, in Czech Republic. And that was actually the fourth country that we tried to, to get the license. 
and um, and after we we got the license, we start to to doing the payments, and uh, we we learn uh, pretty quickly actually that more people wants to invest into crypto assets or Bitcoin than than people to to spend these bitcoins. And actually, this is how we we came to to the economy, uh, where basically we will help people to invest into into crypto companies. Great start. So perhaps before uh, we follow your explanation, uh, we should uh, you should not me, <laughs> of course, um, explain perhaps these basic terms that it will be easier understanding your language. What's a decentralized economy? What are blockchain technologies? What's blockchain application? What's initial coin offering? And then, of course, about the differences between the ICO, like initial coin offering, initial public offering that we mostly know, or crowdfunding, like classical way. Yeah. So, okay, so for the Kishila, we we went traditional venture capital path. So we, we raised the angel round and seed round uh, for the company altogether around uh, half a million euros. And uh, we learned uh, with Kisila how difficult it is to, to, to fundraise and to, to be a, let's say, classical startup these days, and especially from this region, um, maybe Maybe it's easier in Silicon Valley, or um, but like from let's say yeah, from from where we are, it's 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 quite painful and uh, uh, very difficult, and um, and also long process and a lot of paperwork with with this process, and crowd sale on blockchain. This is uh, this part I need to correct uh, to correct you. Actually, we didn't raise. Uh, uh, we didn't do the crowd sale on Kickstarter. Right. We actually do do it directly with with our website uh, on blockchain. So basically, it was uh, our software and our website without uh, no third party uh, um, platform. Um, so basically, we addressed people from from crypto communities and. Uh, uh, and let them know about about the crowd sale that we're doing. So basically, raising money for our new startup economy. Um, okay. So yeah, here's the term. It's called uh, ICO, which means initial coin offering, and it's like an analogy from the IPO, uh, initial public offering. So here, what what we did is we actually sold our company to the investors. Uh, I think uh, yeah, 80, 85 percent of the company was sold during this process, and we kept 13 percent for ourselves, and uh, two percent went to, for the marketing, actually for the uh, for people who actually uh, help us during the campaign uh, to promote our our uh, ICO. Um, yeah. So um, actually. Uh, you explained already how did it come? Uh, how did you come up with the idea for e economy uh, itself? It was Kashila, and then it was economy. So you saw the opportunity. Yeah. Uh, you saw the op opportunity uh, in this decentralized economy, or and the potential. How did you assess the potential? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so, okay, I hear Matt say that, like um, last year or like a year and a half ago, uh, we saw some projects like uh, Ethereum, which is basically the, let's say, the, 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 the base ground for the, for the blockchain uh, project these days. Uh, so it's actually the, 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 the new thing after the Bitcoin. So with Bitcoin, you can just uh, uh, send around tokens of value, but in Ethereum blockchain, you can put uh, some code inside this blockchain. So it's not like just the tokens of value that can live inside the blockchain, but it's whatever code you 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 program, you can put it into the blockchain. So this is the kind of the 
the main thing of Ethereum. And what this enables, so wait, oh, okay, so here also Ethereum did the crowd save for, for their project. And uh, like, a, yeah, it's almost two years now um, or something like that. So basically they raised money to do this project same way as actually we did. And also before us, maybe there was like a 10 project that they, 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 they tried to do or they did the same as, as we did. Um, so, um, and, and this project uh, kind of showed us that uh, you can do very efficiently um, collecting, raising money for the project on blockchain. So uh, where people um, invest with cryptocurrencies into, into this new startup. And, um, and, and so basically, these new startups are not actually, it has very little to do with, with, with Bitcoin. Uh, it's just the way that uh, shares, the, the, the equity of the company is distributed. So, um, so it, it, the, the shares of the company, um, they function the same way as cryptocurrencies. Uh, are functioning, so it's permissionless. You can send them around, and it it works with the you know with the public and private keys. So the technology is the same, but it actually it's not. Uh, it's it actually represents the token represents the 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 share of the company. So that's why um, uh, basically these shares, these tokens are actually shares of the companies and it's not like just value it's hard to 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 find out what is the intrinsic value of, of some cryptocurrency and so on so we actually uh, don't think that uh, well maybe bitcoin will survive because it's uh, it's very strong and it was the first one but all the others uh, i mean they they don't add up anything else that Bitcoin can do or Ether can do. So basically, um, these this, this other cryptocurrencies are super not interesting to us. Uh, so we're focusing only on the, the, the app. It's called, the, the term here is app tokens. So the, the cryptocurrency where the token represent the, the share of the company. So this is, uh, this is the one, uh, this is the, the tokens that we're focusing at. Startup company. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. How actually will these startup entrepreneurs evaluate one token, or one app token? Okay, so um, these tokens are tradable on the exchanges. And and actually the, the market determines the, the price of the, yeah, of the, of the, of the token. So, and this is very different concept. Like, for example, like with with Kishila, with uh, our previous company, uh, like our investors, they can get out of the. So basically, if we sell the company or if we do the IPO, that's how basically they will get the back the return on their investment. But here, you can basically exit out of the, your position of your investment anytime. So this is the the huge difference. Uh, to compare it with with other uh, traditional startups, and that's why that's one of the reasons we also think that this sort of companies uh, in the future there's going to be a lot of companies uh, where where or startups that will do uh, the the fundraising this way instead of going the traditional uh, institutional investors uh, they will they will rather do the the crowd sale and issue the, the stocks of the company on blockchain as we did. So actually, this is the answer. Uh, what are the reasons for such a successful campaign of economy, isn't it? Yeah. But it's a different type of, in, it's not a classical, as you say, venture capital or business exactly. angels yeah. investment. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Here, I also saw that, okay, besides Bitcoin and Ether, there is also LISC. Is any different from Ether? Um, Lisk is, let's say, it's um, it try to do pretty much the same thing as as Ether tried to do or Ethereum is doing. Um, it's basically the 
the the the second network in this in this sense. Mm -hmm. We will see what's going to happen in the future. It can be like I don't know the you know you have like different content management systems for websites, for example. So it, it's it's not an issue if you use uh, WordPress or Drupal for your website. You know. So let's say that one is the most popular one, which would probably be Ethereum, and uh, but others can exist as well. So basically, these are the blockchain uh, networks that you can put something else on this blockchain as well, mm -hmm. not just uh, values of token like, mm -hmm. like this would be fine. So if we say, actually, uh, you know, I, when I try to listen to you and also try to focus on the next question, that's quite a difficult job. So uh, I might also ask you something just twice because, you know, sure. I won't get it. So I don't know. Uh, our students, our uh, colleagues will for sure also come up with the questions when they won't understand something. It's a difficult language, isn't it? We agree, probably. Um, so uh, what I wanted to ask is, what's actually, uh -huh, what are actually the other reasons, besides that what you already mentioned, for such a successful campaign uh, as you said, not on Kickstarter, but uh, through the initial coin offering. What would be the other factors that you could think of and present to us? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I guess, uh, okay, let's say that people who understand the blockchain and uh, they, it's a small group of people. Let, maybe it's uh, 100,000 people, to, like they actually, you know, we're looking to blockchains and try to do something. And so it's a, uh, it's it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's it's pretty homogeneous small group. And uh, I guess people uh, in this group are thinking that tools such as uh, the ones that we're doing at the economy um, needs to exist. So basically, um, I think that uh, so if if um, if blockchain, blockchain companies will exist in the future, so basically, and if distributed economy will will be part of the future, um, something like we we're, we're doing at the economy will be needed, and so that's why, I guess we it was the, the right kind of um, idea for sure, but uh, we also kind of knew how to execute it. So uh, actually. Most probably, you had some references already in yeah, this, sure. this community. So yeah, We must know that, uh, okay, so like for, for the outside world, you know, we were like nobody, but uh, for the people inside the community, uh, the crypto community, um, we, we, we have the, or we had before we, we did the campaign, uh, good reputation. So um, we were operating uh, a Bitcoin company for more than two years. Uh, and um, and I mean the the, the issue here that uh, we're not trying to scam people or so basically that, that uh, um, yeah we we had good reputation so that that this of course very important part of uh, of our success with, with the economy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, were you actually also surprised when uh, you saw that? Uh, the first expectations were exceeded for over ten times. I mean, regarding the the collection of uh, of, of let's say uh, bitcoins. Um, okay, so it was on the, the the upper limit, but it wasn't surprise to us, to, to be honest. Also, when you're doing the it's similar with with the Kickstarter campaign, probably uh, you try to put your target a little bit lower so that you over fund the, the, the actual campaign, right? So, but let's say that our target was between like uh, three to seven million. This is, this is, this was kind of the, the, let's say the sweet spot or something that we were realistically trying to, to collect here. Because we knew that if we do the, so we, one thing that we know for sure, we knew for sure is that, uh, uh, that we will not collect like one million. Because yeah. Uh, we know that we knew that if we will not uh, raise like um, something close to a million the first week, the, the campaign will not be successful. And uh, if 
So if we raise the first million in the first week, then it means that we're gonna raise at least like three or five million. So, so that's it, how. So yeah. it was four weeks altogether, and yeah, it was, was 10, 10 million. I, yeah, I think it was four or five weeks. I really don't know right now. <laughs> so was, actually, I think it was five weeks. What was your offer? Three thousand five hundred um, people bid so, into it. Yeah, yeah. So basically, we we sold the, the company, right? Mm -hmm. so, eighty-five percent. Yeah, eighty-five percent mm -hmm. of the company, and uh, yeah, that that was the offer. Okay, yeah. great. So, if that we understand the entire uh, idea even better, so what's the infrastructure behind the economy? It's what we tackled, yeah. Yeah. So, it's, um, blockchain technologies. So actually, oh. it's so okay. So we're in a way we're like a, a Wall Street for 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 decentralized economy. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, so it's it's. Okay, so there are a little some new concepts here, so that's why it's not like uh, the analogy. It's not like correct. Like uh, I mean, it's not hundred percent, hundred percent correct. Yeah, but um, so yeah. So okay. So if there will be a lot of companies, startups that will uh, do similar uh, crowd sale and fundraising, and um, if so, if if. If, if there's going to be a lot of this sort of companies, tools will be needed to, to sort these companies. So basically, to 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 enable uh, people to easily invest in these companies, and uh, so that's that that's something that we're doing with the economy. So to put together, so basically we are doing software for um, for fund managers. Uh, in these crypto uh, blockchain companies, right? And um, yeah, so and they will put together something like uh, similar to funds in traditional economy, and because uh, it's easier, because a lot of companies are, I mean, it's a volatile market. You know, you can and you can, of course, it's like buying a particular stock of the company, right? It's uh, it's the risk is extremely high, right? Especially with the startups. I mean, here are startups. With the startup, it's exactly the same as in you know traditional world. Most of them will fail, right? And um, that's why it's super risky business. And uh, and uh, if you if you put together like let's say you know like 20 or 30 companies, and if you do the proper due diligence on these companies, um, you know I mean probably not all of the 30 in this fund will fail, right? And if one succeeds, it's like you know, it's enough to pay back like for all the the, the other 29 that pay. Right? Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. So basically, the logic is completely the same as with with traditional uh, investment into startups. Right? So um, if you if you maybe read like uh, uh, Peter Thiel's book uh, From Zero to One, so basically he's he's explaining like. Uh, um, how his investments are doing. So basically, he bought like I don't know, like 10% or something. Uh, Facebook, like uh, he was the first investor there, and then he has another company which is uh, they're doing some some software for uh, uh, for for businesses and governments. And basically, how how these investments of his are doing? So the first one uh, makes more than all the rest together, and the second one is low. So this, this is how it, this is how it looks like, right? And we think with 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 investing into crypto companies, um, it will be something quite similar to the traditional uh, startup world. So, um, is there any minimum investment? No. 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 So this is something that the blockchain technology enables as well. Like for example. We were we were calculating how much will it cost us to to send out dividends to 100 um, uh, of our uh, holders of our uh, tokens, and the cost is around 50 euros. There are some already some 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 investors that already sold them. Uh, I mean, sure, we are on the market uh, right now. We're something like four times above the, the ICO uh, price. Which is 100%? Um, I mean, yeah, we, like uh, daily, daily traffic is around uh, 200,000 uh, euros, 
which is not bad. Um, so it's yeah, it's it's. I mean, it's liquid enough for uh, um, such high uh, yeah. returns because I got it four times more. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a lot. Yeah. I mean, from the oh, traditional, offering. yeah, yeah it's, it's really a lot. Yeah, it's uncomparable. But this is like um, <laughs> yeah. Even if it sounds a little bit funny, but it's pretty normal for 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 our world. Right. So with this answers, actually, we answered how will economy function, isn't it? Yeah, basically. Yeah. yeah. So we we will collect. Uh, it's like a platform. Like let's say it's uh, like an app store for funds. You know? Yeah. Absolutely. So okay. where we get the fees from the. Uh, so we we let other people. Put funds on our platform, and then we share the, mm -hmm. the the fees. So we talked about opportunities. We didn't talk so much about the barriers uh, that you have faced in the process of developing economy. Can you tell us some most important ones? Um, yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, so for sure, the biggest challenge here is uh, that uh, this is not mentioned in any legislation anywhere right now because it's a new thing right and um, and like the challenge the one of the biggest challenging here is that so we so our position is that uh, this is and it obviously is a new asset type right new asset class and uh, something that you know it, it at one point it it, it needs to, you know, meet the legislature and legislator and uh, be in the, you know, written what, how, how basically, um, you know, what, what this is actually is, right? And um, and for example, um, like in US, uh, the um, so the laws there are like uh, the the laws about securities. Are so widely uh, written that that maybe we could be, you know, at some point of or um, at one point of view for the uh, interpretation, we could be a security. So basically, that's why uh, we will start without letting uh, U.S. citizens to invest into our funds. So that's basically a challenge here, and. Um, yeah, because like the 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 the, the laws about uh, how how securities are defined, they were written in like 150 years ago, but since they are so widely written, uh, it's uh, it's something that we don't want to take risk here. For example, so this is kind of the challenge right now. Have I understood well? So Americans will be excluded. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a. Uh, it, you know, it's a big word, right? Okay. So that's why we we're, we're a little bit more we're focusing. Over seven on, billion. Okay. Yeah, we're we're focusing a lot on uh, on Asian markets and um, and European as, as well. Right? So what about the trust in cryptocurrencies? Mm. I'm one of those people, you know, yeah. who don't know anything about yeah, them. It's super, it's, yeah, it's it's I'm extremely like hard. I mean, if paper. you if you just look at this from the outside, it's like um, so maybe it's like if we would uh, if we would take a look back when when the internet started, um, you know it was so dangerous, right? And if you ask some people in I don't know in the beginning of or like what's that like 20 years ago, if uh, if you can you know if the banks would be using the, the internet for uh, for on online payments and this sort of thing, you know. It, I mean, this is something that it's pretty scary, right? Or it, it was scary, and uh, it's pretty similar here right now. I mean, uh, yeah, there's a lot of scams going on. You know, people um, people are issuing their own sort of uh, coins and do the um, do the multi-level marketing and pyramid schemes and Ponzi schemes with this and uh, you know, and this is something that for sure not, this is something that doesn't help us for sure, right? But this is normal with, with every new technology, 
um, this sort of things uh, are happening, right? And uh, but anyways, I mean uh, that's why we, we try to uh, try to explain like you know what happens here with these startups and that these are that we're only uh, enabling uh, app tokens, which are actually the the shares of the startups, and this is how we we try to um, to position. So um, we can move further on. Of course, there are so many more questions that uh, uh, will also probably arise from uh, our students, and we shall leave some room for them and their, let's say, a curiosity. But uh, perhaps some more questions from my side. So you actually briefly explained the ownership structure today. Um, you talked today about economy, and yeah. you said like 85% it's investors, yeah. 13 it's the it's the team, it's co-founders, mm -hmm. and two is the, uh, it was the costs, yeah. Yeah. So right now we like the whole team just has like 30% uh, of, of the of the company. And, uh, Do you mean the whole team? It's people who work for yeah, you. Yeah, it's all the, together. So basically, yeah. did you employ? Did you create some jobs already? Yeah, yeah, sure. Like right now. So when we start a campaign, there's maybe like eight people. Um, um, right now, I think we're at 25. And um, and what's your actual daily job? Tell me, 24/7. Um, it's like in any other. Startup. I mean, it's a lot of. Uh, um, basically, it's it's a lot about hiring and dealing with people. Who does that? that you or Yanni? Um, we're also doing this. Yeah. This I, is very difficult. Yeah. This is this is basically the. Yeah. You try to set up the the culture in the company. The you know, it's it's yeah. It's difficult to, to scale it for sure. Um, so yeah. Um, Find the right people. That's something uh, that's, that's very challenging. Do you have Slovenian team or international team? Um, we have an international team. Uh, most of the people right now are still Slovenians, but uh, for example, we have uh, we the first uh, the first guy outside of Slovenia was uh, from Sweden, Daniel, and uh, we have one guy from Latvia, one from Litva. And uh, we have one girl from Bulgaria on um, support. So yeah, we try to to to, mm -hmm. to be international and to, for sure we'll be. Mostly IT specialists? Uh, or yeah. marketing? Yeah, mostly, IT. Mostly, mostly IT. Yeah. Here we come to the question that we skipped at the, at the beginning. What's yeah. your background and Yanni's background? Yeah, so... <laughs> Um, yeah, I studied uh, informatics uh, and uh, social science, and uh, but I was doing the I was I was coding when I was young. Uh, Programming. Yeah, yeah, like well, like I don't know, maybe like uh, I don't code for like ten years now already, but uh, I still know how the um, like how to read the code and uh, and I don't. I, I know how to work with with programmers. So, and what is Yanni's background? Yeah, it's pretty much the same. But uh, let's say that he actually did the the coding for the first version of of Kishila, so that was like not so far away. And uh, and right now he's uh, he's he's focusing a lot of on on, uh, on trading and uh, and due diligence on investment that. So you share, so you are quite complementary. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. try to be, yeah. Okay, great. So uh, how actually do you plan um, economy to be managed in the future? Okay, so um, here, here's one thing with, with the blockchain companies as well. So basically we have the company which is, uh, which is incorporated uh, with the traditional laws, so, you know, so like a, a regular company, but this company is actually the, it's called the term here is service operator of this blockchain company, and um, and right now we have uh, so basically um, 
for two years we will be operating these uh, blockchain companies and then there will be vote if our investors still want us to be as a service operator of this company. So this is how this uh, distributed economy actually works. So it's not actually you know my company or you know uh, or our company. It's basically the like, it's an organization that uh, lives in the blockchain and people who are investors into into this company can actually influence on the leadership of this company. So basically that's how we we are also motivated to to you know to be a to lead the company into the right direction. So actually, which would be the factors that they would support you uh, for the next two years, after two years? Um, yeah, I guess we need to deliver what we promised. That's for sure the, one of the most important criteria. And uh, yeah, basically, if, if, they, if, if, if they will think that uh, we did a good job, they will for sure want that to, to, to still be in charge. I believe you. I believe you will have support with such a brilliant idea. Actually, tell me what? How would you describe yourself as entrepreneur? Because this is highly innovative idea, isn't it? It yes. was not just lying somewhere there and adopted from something existing. Or yeah, it's I mean, highly innovative. Yeah. It's also yeah, but I mean, you know, a lot of people have good ideas, and uh, it, it's not about like only to have a good idea or something. It's more about how do you execute this and if it's a good timing for the execution of such an idea. And so I think we here we and for sure you need to have um, some luck as well, right? Uh, it's not just, you know, um, but we have this, we, we, we say this like, uh, um, many times, like, uh, or this is actually the time. what I'm saying. Uh, also, is uh, you need to be open for to the luck. You know, it's, if you're not open to it, it's not going to happen, right? Uh, you need to try to do the the right things, but still, I mean, uh, yeah, and uh, yeah. Okay. So, um, what shall we say? Uh, you you for sure. Uh, oh, no, no, I forgot to, to ask you before I said, uh, before I come to that other question, I forgot to ask you, uh, there is always a danger, like somebody would break into the system. That's what I forgot to ask you. So what protection measures are planned and integrated for the investors because of this danger that somebody would perhaps start, try to break in and abuse the system? Yeah. Um... Well, okay, so there's some technical level. Uh, this, I mean, uh, so how how the blockchain works is you can have um, it's, the the expression here is paper wallets and uh, so cold storage. That's that's the, the second expression. So um, you store like most of the assets uh, you store on the um, on the offline wallets. So basically, the, the private keys were created offline on the device that were never plugged to the to the internet, for example. And uh, and it's also multi-seat wallet. So that means that uh, you have um, you can unlock the wallet with let's say uh, five out of seven keys. Mm -hmm. And these keys are actually stored on paper and in safe boxes in different banks. So this is how we do the, the cold storage, actually. And um, and so basically, you try to minimize the, the risk of, of bridging the, the security, right? And um, so usually, it's like, uh, like or general kind of how it is. It's like, OK, 80% of the assets are in cold storage. And then you have like. A, there are already companies uh, which are doing multi six so to have the other private keys uh, that they are holding, and um, so um, and these are for the wallets that are exposed to the, in, uh, let's say, to some degree, uh, to the internet, and um, 
so that's like, like for 17% of the assets. And around 3% is in so-called hot wallets, so that's something that's, uh, that, that it's, yeah, that's, it's high risk. And uh, so what we're kind of um, dealing with right now is, uh, so we will actually uh, ensure this 3% on the, on the hot wallets, for example, right? So this is how we try to, to, to minimize the, the, the risk. And the, yeah. I see already it's time also to take some questions. So um, I have to check this. There is a question. Uh-huh. Esi asks, what was, Mitya, uh, your motivation despite the risk you mentioned? Um, Okay, um, I think this is, so it's a little bit political actually. Um, I think how the, 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 the economy is structured right now, it's, uh, or the, also the politics is structured right now, it, uh, it's, it's, it's not perfect and it's something that will change in the future. And I think, because uh, with the blockchain technology, what, what happens here is, uh, it's actually the question about how how to govern these decentralized organizations, and if you can govern a company uh, in decentralized way, uh, you can actually do this to the to the state as well, right? And um, I think uh, so. If you can have a, an elections like every five minutes, you know, or you know, vote on, or something. Uh, that is uh, that is important for like in, at this moment, you know. You don't need the representatives sitting somewhere, you know. Uh, I think it's right now the the, the political system around the world. Uh, it's uh, it's pretty diluted, right? So like um, they are super disconnected from from the people, and uh, I think this sort of technology can. Uh, Will enable um, new sort of, of of how the the political system will look in the future, but it will for sure not happen. Uh, it will be bottom up approach, not top down. And basically, this is this is the the motivation, honestly, behind it. Yeah. Okay. Here's the next question. If you, I have to lean in, you know, to be able to read. So, how do you define the success? What was your biggest satisfaction from entrepreneurship till now? Um, so okay, before before uh, uh, doing Kishila uh, and economy, uh, I think it was pretty cool to know that uh, like a million people are using the app that you created. That's kind of uh, I think that that was cool and. Uh, and uh, and people were using and they're still using uh, uh, these apps uh, and nobody knows actually about me that I actually put it out. Uh, so this is this is something that's kind of cool. And um, yeah, what was the the second part of the question? I have to roll down because <laughs> I also saw the first question that actually was one of the first. So. What was the yeah, biggest that was the, satisfaction? That was yeah. the, and of course, I mean, it was pretty cool. We 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 did the uh, the very successful campaign for sure. I mean, but um, but again, I mean, it's like we just raised the money for the for the for our startup. So, in terms of doing the the successful campaign, it for sure was successful. But uh, uh, for me, the the true to satisfaction will be that uh, when once the economy will be a uh, cash flow positive company, and I think this will be soon actually. Oh, that's great yeah. news. So uh, we are waiting for. Uh, there was Marina Marina Zatelska's question, and um, actually, to her question, you already answered. That's why I want. Uh, I want to read it again, but there is Svetlana's question. What has so far been the most difficult or riskiest decision you have had to make as an entrepreneur? So, not the most successful, not the riskiest. Yeah, I guess the, the riskiest was that uh, 
I actually stopped doing the previous project because um, basically I was in comfortable position, you know, uh, let's say to walk, uh, uh, um, to walk um, during this this life here on Earth, right? Um, but uh, yeah, I, I just think that uh, you know this is if you do something that uh, um, that you want to do, you know, it also keeps you alive. And uh, you know, you know, I, I like to kind of to 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 push something out of myself if I'm you know to see where my limits are. I would be a little bit naughty and I would ask you different yeah. way, you know. Okay. Uh, so what causes the he the biggest headache to you at the moment? Uh, no headaches? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's a, it's a lifestyle, I'd say. Um, right now, the biggest headache, I don't know. Uh, uh, there, there are so, because there are so many, like, small challenges, you know, uh, like every day. Um, you kind of, I, I know that I got used to, you know, like so many pressures from different kind of angles and uh, yeah, you, you need to, to have, uh, you, you know, your your skin needs to be uh, uh, not to, uh, you know, thick. Too thin, yeah, too thin. <laughs> too thin, yeah. <laughs> so here we have some more questions. Yes, he says, as, as an entrepreneur, what do you suggest um, to us, a sparkle to let us to success. What do you mean here, Isi? It's a little bit more difficult to understand. I believe. Hmm. Do, do I get um, this question? A kind of. Uh, what do you suggest to us as a sparkle? To um, perhaps fire yeah, us uh, okay, yeah. to start I think, our I think, stories. Yeah, I think you need to 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 follow what you really believe in. You know, um, for me, um, you know, I okay. What will take us? What will take yeah, us yeah. to succeed? Yeah. Yeah, for sure, you need to pursue, pursue something that that you love. You know, because uh, it's uh, it's 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 super difficult sometimes, you know. So if you don't like, if you don't like completely love what you're doing, uh, it will be too difficult. And uh, so that's one thing. And the other thing is uh, you need to keep pushing it, you know. Violeta asks here, actually, she makes an analogy be between the crisis, uh, real estate crisis 2008, and uh, Bitcoin, the potential for Bitcoin to collapse. Um, yeah, it's uh, so with 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 Bitcoin, it's uh, it's a super scary, right? <laughs> so there's so basically there's a lot of the volatility is so high that. Uh, it's uh, yeah, it's extremely risky. But anyways, I don't. So Bitcoin has a big brand, but um, I think it's uh, it has a pretty good chance that it will die at one point. It 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 might not exactly die, but it will. It can happen to to Bitcoin what happened, for example, to to let's say Earth's Messenger. You know, like the the. You know the the, the yeah it, the years the the thing that we chat like uh, 20 years ago or something. Uh, so what happened to that? You know the the MNS Messenger appeared and people were start using that. And after Messenger, Skype, and uh, after that Facebook uh, talk and uh, WhatsApp and now Snapchat. So basically the the new the new the new thing that emerged just at the previous one, right? And this is something that can happen to the Bitcoin, and uh, uh, we'll see. I mean, if if it will actually uh, survive. But for me, like super interesting is like the technology that you know a Bitcoin kind of in brought into to, to us, right? 
with the so what Bitcoin showed is that trust can be decentralized. So this is something that uh, it wasn't done before, and um, and uh, this this new uh, things that are emerging from blockchain. Uh, the, the decentralized trust is embedded into this, uh, these new things. Here is a question from Anita. Can you share with us some of your most successful growth hacking strategies that uh, you used in your startup so far? In other words, how and when did they go so viral? Was it instant or did some time pass? Um, like, okay, the most so basically, the, the way that our campaign was structured for uh, structured for uh, for the ICO economy. Um, so basically, we spent very little, or close to zero uh, euros uh, for the for the promoting of, of our ICO. So basically, we paid with something that uh, that you know. That Actually, wasn't existing at the time, right? So basically, we we promised people like that we will distribute like two percent of our company uh, if they will help us do the uh, the promotion of, of of our crowd sale, and uh, this is this is kind of the uh, pretty cool thing that we did. Here, thank you, uh, thank you, Team Media. <laughs> ah, there is still that question: yeah. Where does this team come from? You know, because I'm used that uh, you are media, yeah. and can you tell our students uh, how come you are team? Yeah. It, uh, so basically, this was my nickname when I was uh, when I was start using the computer, and uh, after that, when you know, when I was traveling around or, or basically was living somewhere out of Slovenia and uh, basically I was people started calling me team and that was I was uh, so some of the people knew me from the from the online world and where I was team and that's how basically uh, um, I start using both names uh, and yeah it's not the it's it's more the practical kind of thing that uh, that happened not Something that I was planning or something. Just sneak yeah. Okay, but it has its history, its yeah. origin. Here I see Neil Neil's uh, question, but I believe that we address that. What will be the future of Bitcoin? Mm -hmm. We address that with the uh, former questions. And could you please tell us about the positive and negative possibilities? That's what you were talking already about the yeah. potential failure, Bitcoin's failure. So. Uh, the students, do you have still some questions? Please, we have another five minutes, then uh, we will have to say bye to our guest. In the meantime, before some new question comes up, pops up, I would just perhaps ask uh, uh, Mitya to share with us some recommendations for startups, how to start, how to actually uh, take the risks of the entrepreneurial world. Um, yeah, I think you, the, the the important thing is that you actually get out of the you know uh, of the couch or you know your your, your apartment. Uh, you need to talk to people that are into the uh, you know areas that you're interested in and uh, and. Try to, to to pitch some in your ideas to, to someone who 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 actually knows you think you know something about about this and um, you need to be active and uh, yeah go around and talk to people and uh, see what they think about your idea. You see the question here about the business model. Did you draw your business model? Did you develop your business model? Are you innovating it constantly? Yeah. How often have you innovated it already? That's yeah, my question. I mean, yeah, we, we, we spin it around a lot. I mean, like with the with the Kishila, as I said before, um, so basically for a cup for almost a month uh, with Yanni, we were just discussing like what you know what to do on on 
in, in, in this field, you know, with, uh, with, uh, with, with Bitcoin and Kishila at the time. So uh, the, the Kishila payment processor was actually the, the fifth product that was actually rolled out. Uh, before that, we were doing some wallets and uh, we tried to do some, uh, some, some tools to be integrated into the cashiers and this sort of thing. So yeah, we spin, we pivoted a lot and uh, tried to you know to 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 find the product market fit. Okay, yeah. great. And one more question from Din: Would you recommend buying Ether currency at this point? <laughs> Uh, I try not to do the, the investment advice, but let's just say that uh, so it will be very interesting here for for Ethereum for sure uh, because uh, right now Ether is uh, is still uh, uh, mine, so people are still mining Ether, and uh, it's called this is called proof of work, and it will go to the proof of stake where where the the inflation will be. Uh, Way lower than it is right now, and if the buying pressure will be the same as it is right now, uh, I guess you can figure out what can happen with the price if that's the case. There is still classical economic yeah. economic equilibrium we yeah. talk here, isn't yeah. it? So, do you have any more any the last thoughts that you want to share with uh, <coughs> our students? Yeah, maybe so. Um, I think that, like with the, with the, a lot of the, the technology that we're doing and uh, will be developed on blockchain, will be just used in the you know everyday services. So, you know, people don't know uh, like what FTP is or te uh, Telnet and so on. So basically, they start using the services when the you know the the, the upper layer. Uh, exist already like you know with the Facebook you know how to upload the picture but you you didn't know how to do this uh, via uh, FTP for example you know like before that and uh, I think the, the the blockchain technology will be integrated in many services and people will using the technology without actually knowing that uh, they are using it right so it's also like I'm sure that a lot of people using internet don't know like what uh, HTTP protocol is and so on, but they are all using I don't know, uh, so. for sure not. Yeah. I believe many people don't know also today in our session. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Tim, Mitya, thank you so much for sharing with yeah. us your story and experience, and I hope that uh, you found it interesting and uh, talk to you soon. Uh, once again, good luck. Yeah, thank you for yeah. having me. Yes. <laughs> and once again, thank you and bye to everybody. Good night. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye-bye.